to the Lincoln Cast for the week of February 23rd. This is episode 40. My name is, my name is Thurbleton, and I'm joined by Duran. How you doing, man? My name is Thur. My name is not Thurbleton. My name my name is Duran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to a great start already, guys. English is not very good. Nailed it. So good. Um, we're doing this sort of live. I I almost want to how, wait. How, how's the sort of like how much more live do you get than this? Other than like going to each individual person's home and reciting it, going to the houses with a script that's like it's. Still I don't a think lot. It, I don't think that's anybody right, wants boys. noob in their house. Post your addresses. Here's ad libbing. Post your addresses. Look, cast is now delivery. No, nobody wants noob in their house, sir. This actually, is as live no, as we can legally get. Actually, no. We will have a, a more live show, and I'm saying this now True. is because Shinboy is taking uh, his well. He he's re- promised as of right now to take his uh, mic to PAX East with everybody else, and uh, they'll do a show there. If it turns to anime, though, Shinboy has, has sworn up and down that he would just pack the microphone up and walk out, <laughs> which it is you know very likely to do. Having uh, very like the people that are going to be there, New Barama's going to walk there. I mean, All right. yeah, hitchhike or fly or something, but he's going to walk. But but, but <laughs> now, buddy. Um, and next week I will be at Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle. If anybody is in Seattle and likes comic books, check nobody, me out there. Nobody likes comic books. Nobody like yeah. Well, it's a chance to go to Seattle. If you're a pretty lady, <laughs> third will sign your chest. You know, what, if you have one chance to go to Seattle this year, go to Pax Prime. Don't go to Comic Con. Yeah, Pax Prime. Mm. I'm definitely planning on going to Pax Prime as well. So you could better be there, there and get your God willing, I will try. There but. Too. But uh, d- does uh, does Canada have any podcasts, noob? Um, there's the Great White North podcast. That is really just a uh, white supremacist podcast. So, hmm. but, yeah. But everything good with you, buddy? <sighs> I'm tired. Cynic left us. He just he like. Did. It's like was it like Cynic's idea? He's like, let's let's do a live show, guys. Let's I know, right? Yeah, do a live show, and then he's like, oh, I guess because I can't be on the podcast anymore. Sorry, I talked too much about PS2 and played too much pigeons. <laughs> well, let's uh, talk about PS2 and then talking for four hours with Durin for PS4. Oh, yeah, we did that. That was that was fun. Just the two of you. Just the two of no us. Fucking four. That won't work. Just something to <laughs> only long enough to listen. Was it was it a lot like her let's play where where there were just like long stretches of silence? No, it it was four hours of oh, straight wow. talking. Did you guys talk about fashion? Well, that it, was... no. How long was the actual PS4 announcement? Like an two hour. Two hours. And a half. Hour. Two hours. Double the length of the actual announcement. We, that is NFL. Did breakdown quality right there well we had i mean we, we talked about a lot more things than they did because we also talked about you know the potential future stuff like what we might be able to expect out of you know the system pricing the potentials that it could have for you know the industry as a whole breaking down some of those you know pine the sky ideas they had for the gaikai stuff that, like that kind of thing yeah why um, were they all wearing blazers and jeans? I don't yeah, understand I don't, that. Is that I what a game know. developer wears? I guess. Like that's that's just the that, that's yeah. how that's as cleaned up as they can get. <laughs> it's I believe like it. it's like really formal, but it's not too formal because I've we're seen like gamers, David Jaffe on so multiple like occasions. Casual. I can believe it. It's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was the only part that was disappointing in terms of like aesthetically or just visually. It was when the bungee guys were up on stage. <laughs> that was the You're most just like standing there awkward. so weirdly with the arms. Yeah, we don't know I was uncomfortable and I wasn't even there. Yeah. It was oh, it was terrible. And like it's the weird thing is they only had one guy to talk and right. he wasn't moving his hands and then the like, three guys in the background were even worse and standing there like Right, like <laughs> it reminds me of like, you know, the the fucking um uh fucking I'm totally blanking on the Oscars. You know, when you, you have, like, a group of people that, like, will win something or whatever, and they all go up there, one person talks, yeah, everyone just stands around smiling, and then they walk off like stage. It's like, they're generally, they're, like, looking pretty or something, but... True, these yeah, guys these guys were just, were just like... like they didn't know what to do with either, like, their arms and their legs, so they were standing yeah. in a really weird posture. <laughs> it's like they are about to make a dash for it, and then their arms were just, like, stretched out yeah. to the sides. You know? And, like, one of the guys, his, his blazer looked like it was, like, maybe two sizes too big on him. <laughs> like he was wearing daddy's blazer or something. I don't know. It was, it was weird. Yeah. 
I don't know. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't as bad. I found it offensive when they put up Ubisoft French people, <laughs> front men. You realize they're like French, French though. Like you don't have to hate them. It's yeah, okay. They yeah, they're, they're not French I hate Canadian. French. They're straight French. I mean, you like so, you, so they are cheese eating surrender yeah. monkeys. Yes, you. But that's that's not their fault. That they're born into that. Don't hate like, them. I guess like we're born into you know. All right. Well, uh, I, guess, I guess guess we'll um, uh, figure out what's during. What you've been up to? What you've been playing? Um, not as much Guild Wars two this week, actually. I've kind oh, of. Oh, that's a bummer. I well, I mean, I, I played a hit a little bit here and there. I've been you know continuing to love my warrior. Finally took him into AC, and that was fun. AC story. Um, oh, I need to do AC story. We do story no- the story nights every Sunday. Yeah, story oh. Sundays. Um, and we yeah, did AC. I think Rayos has run story Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so last week we did AC. A bunch of us went in there with some some alts. Um, so that was fun, you know, being, being able to play a class that can, you know, maybe stand in some damage every once in a while was different. Um, other than that, uh, I played a little bit of Age of Conan, Unchained. Wow. Okay. Is that like Django Unchained, except Conan? I mean, does Django Unchained have nudity? Yes, it does. Then yes, it is. Um... Okay. Conan boobies. Yeah, but Conan all, all up in, all up in. I, I don't yeah. know. I, I didn't get to That's that Conan. yet to find out if he had if he had boobies. But oh, you know, no! I'll, okay. I'll ask him next time I'm on his talk show. You didn't play? Was, did you play the MMO of it, or was it just some? Yeah, it's the MMO. Okay, I thought it's basically so. Conan had had Hyborian adventures. It's it's the MMO that has gone free to play. That's that's where the Unchained right. came from, uh, uh, written in blood because extreme. It's um, Unchained because it doesn't cost a lot of money. What? Yeah. Uh, it's actually not terrible from what I played so far. I, I don't know about the end game. It, it probably drops off at some point, but you know, it is kind of the old school stand in place, use your abilities um, type of MMO. So if you're into more of the action stuff, clearly not for you. Um, but I mean, it's it's you know, it's decent. It looks really good. They have they've clearly done some visual work on it. It actually surprisingly supports DX10. I'm interested about the movie physics. Uh, they do not not Korean booby physics though. New. Yeah, I was gonna say, are they better than the jet? Like the well, are they Korean better Japanese? alive beach volleyball two level or like? No, no, no. Oh, a little more damn. toned down than that. Um, damn. But it's cool because like I got it on Steam censorship, and man. I got this this um, redemption code for a cloak, and I, and I I downloaded it or, or you know accepted it, redeemed it, whatever. And like I was like, man, this looks really cool. I wonder why I got this. I could not figure out for the life of me why I got it. And then when I went into an inn. It pushed my camera up like against the door um, after I loaded into the inn, and I noticed on the back of the cloak was the fucking steam symbol, like built into the cloak, like it was made out of like bones and shit. Like it was really cool looking. It's like it the steam cool. T-shirt they had in the Seeker World. If you bought Seeker World on Steam, just yeah, it's, it's not, not, not quite people. as steam blatant as that. Like yeah. it, that, they actually did a good job of like because there's a whole bunch of detail to it. And they kind of did a decent job of like blending it into the rest of the detail. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not that I'm going to leave Guild Wars 2 for, but you know, it's no wizardry online either. So it seems decent. Uh, I played a couple characters like a warrior type character and a priest. Um, and then a bunch of us, uh, shortly before like recording. The, the, so it, that, that still conforms to the, the Holy Trinity and yes. it's still doing pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it still conforms to the Holy Trinity. I can't say it's doing pretty good because pretty it, good. It, it failed on the subscription model, so it had to go free to play. Um, and I haven't really grouped with anybody. I've been doing nothing but solo stuff. Uh, I mean, it's I'm I'm okay with the Holy Trinity as a concept. Oh, yeah. I just don't like the whole. I I didn't like what WoW evolved to, so where it was just like healing became whack a mole. Yeah, and it, it just didn't seem like it, it seemed less skill based and more just look at the birdie. Pretty much. I mean, it, it, being so, somebody who played a healer all the way up until Guild Wars 2, yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, like I said, I've been doing nothing but solo stuff, so I'm not sure how the group dynamic works, if it works. Um, Are you yeah, playing I'm, a I'm female character or a male character? Uh, my That's warrior fighter dude is a male. My priest is a female. Oh. And and with the free, you have two character slots. So those, those are my two characters I have. Um, mm-hmm. The other two are like a ranger, I think. And, or no, the so, so basically, actually, with the way the classes are broken down, there's four base classes or base archetypes, and within those archetypes, there are like three classes you can choose. 
Okay. Um, so like in the warrior one, there's like the tanky one, um, the one that's kind of a more like a paladin except it's dark magic, like dark magic and heavy armor. Um, and then there's another one that is, I forget what it was, but it was. It's, I think it's more of like a berserker type of thing where it's it's heavy armor, Conan, barbarian, weapons, that kind of stuff. Um, and then you know you know priest. There's three different types of priest. Uh, I think there was a mage. Then there were three different types. Of, there was like shaman or something. I don't remember. But yeah, that's basically how the classes are built out. So there's, there's actually quite a few classes. Um, in the free-to-play, there's a race that's locked to you. So, eh. Is it better than The Secret World or significantly worse? The game as a whole? Uh, I haven't played enough of it to really say, but it's better. Or, but Secret World's better. Okay. Right on. I mean, right on. Secret World just has a lot more flexibility and the quests <laughs> are a lot more interesting. And right. the world is kind Voice of more interesting. Voice acting's great. Yeah, voice acting is amazing in that game. Not so much in Conan, um, mm. but it's—I mean—it's just because everyone's a barbarian. It's 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 surprisingly decent, I would say. Mm. Like especially this long after it had come out, and you know, with, with the direction MMOs have gone since then, I was kind of surprised. I was I was I was sort of expecting something maybe a little better than Wizardry Online, but it's actually you know significantly better. Um, aside from that, uh, a bunch of us shortly before recording were playing Firefall. In the open beta weekend, wait, that game's in open beta. That game, well, that game's in open beta for this weekend. That game still, that, that game is actually a, a real thing and not just a, a event at PAX. Um, it is both. It is both a real game that is in beta and has been, I think, for years, as well as an event at PAX. Um, I mean, it's with with games like that and Bioshock Infinite. It's it's great that it's actually become a reality, but for the longest time, it's like I I don't know if this. Is this real? Yeah, well, and what's weird, too, is, like, that game has been in beta for a long, long time. Really? And, like, the things that you're, you're, you're able to do in it are incredibly limited. Like, you can only get up to, like, a tier two, um, uh, I forgot what to call it, but, like, your, your body armor thing. Um, and okay. it seems like most of the content really revolves around thumping and taking points. Mm. What? Okay, what is thumping? So thumping is basically you like you have this big ass hammer that you smack the ground with, and it gives off like seismic readings, and you can tell where like, good places Shit. to thump are. No, I'm disappointed. I thought thumping was going to be something no arousing. No. Um, and then once you found a prime place to thump, then you drop your thumper, which is basically this like thing that is dropped from from orbit into the ground, and it begins to, I guess, like pulse the ground to pull resources up out of the ground with the whole while it's happening there are like insects attacking so it, um, like you you get it to get resources but at the same time it will attract bad guys to it as well yeah and so you have to fend them off or something yeah basically fend them off okay. and keep it keep it alive until it gets up to 100 percent capacity and then you um interact with it to make it shoot back up into space and get your reward i guess i don't i don't really know beans like that's kind of the thing the thing about that game like it, the combat can be kind of fun um, the classes can be interesting, the way you, like, the things you can do with your character and kind of change them out. Like, I was playing a healing character, but I could totally wear, like, an assault mech armor, and it would change, like, my weapons and stuff. But I think, and I think my base abilities, but I'm not really sure. But, like, all of that is, is interesting, but then the things you actually do in the game are fairly mundane. So I just, I don't know, I don't know. Like, is it just me, or does this logo look a lot like StarCraft logo? What, Firefalls? Yeah, incredibly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's I like agree. StarCraft. Um, uh, are, you, are you still holding out for the igna- uh, enig- enigmatic? enigmatic. Like, screw <laughs> English today. Screw English this podcast. <laughs> uh, but the enigmatic uh, alien race that's like not the Zerg with the Protoss to show up? Because you oh, play five, as humans, don't you? Yeah, you play as humans, and then there's the bugs. So yeah, yeah and you fight bugs. Yeah, and so it's just missing. The and protos. I want to say like some, like these firefall guys, like a bunch of them, I think are actually ex Blizzard guys. So <laughs> wouldn't really surprise me too much. There are it, some. It, there are guys you fight. Like like I said, the other thing you do when you're not thumping goes to feel. The other thing you do when you're not thumping is you are like taking points back from this like. NPC race that are coming in and like trying to grab the points and you got to hold them or take them back from them that kind of thing and those are guys those are like 
They're no Protoss. They're they're. I mean, they're, I can't even tell if they're human or not. I don't think Eld- they are. Eldar. But they're no. alien. They're. I believe they are alien. Yeah. So, yeah. This trope is getting really old. I don't know. It just uh, we like. Uh, is it is it that they're just copycatting each other? No one wants to come up with a new idea, or well, is it just I, like it's what? tried and true? Because uh, Halo did the same thing. Um, it's just like it just think, seems like. I think just aliens are easy. Yeah. Like aliens are easy, but it's just it's just like the bug aliens and the super smart aliens. Well, yeah. Well, it can't be super stupid aliens because then they can't get off the planet. Well, no. I mean, like I liked um, moderately smart aliens. Of, like, oh, they're just they're not bugs; they're just orcs, and they're stupid as all get out, but they breed like crazy, yeah. like rabbits. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, but then that's the thing. Like, there are those two things. There are the. I mean, there are the the humans, the orcs, and the you know better beings or whatever and then there are the humans the bugs and the better beings. there's the like, chaos humans those guys are uh, that's, that's a nice twist on it that's the creative chaos? um so yeah basically what i'm saying is expect to see that pa- that at pax prime as well i, it, I yep. don't think that game's coming out anytime soon oh and probably pax east as well well definitely pax east yeah um maybe even pax east next year who knows probably and by the bet after well i mean like it is is Arena going to have a booth at uh, PAX East? Um, I don't know. They can't really show anything off. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like they don't really. I mean, I guess they can maybe show off like the next phase of Fire and Frost. So that's kind of silly, though. But it's... yeah, like I feel like I feel like with their, their model of MMO, like kind of this constant, yeah. small update thing, they don't really have anything to ever really bring to a trade show anymore. Like even you like know, until be PAX until E3. if they announce another expansion, yeah, but, right. The, the, yeah. the next thing we can see something is an expansion. Okay, so like I would I would say like if we expect to see them, if the rumors about an expansion by holiday twenty thirteen are true, I would say you know expect to see them at E three. Right. I mean, it's we, we or, or we maybe, still maybe not E three. Maybe E three is a little big for what they're wanting to do. Maybe like PAX yeah. Prime. Or Guild Wars Con. Wars Con. Guild, so guild, con. there was guild con guild con and it has nothing to do with guilds because nope. that's what guild wars is not about no it, it, yeah. it's, that's when they finally release a uh, last online feature yeah <laughs> coming to the first guild con no that's going to be the third <laughs> expansion they need to they need to space these things out yeah, yeah. but you only you only yeah. get you only get the uh, um, last online function if you go to the guild con as a free order incentive and then you like them on Facebook and then follow them on Twitter. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Sure. So depressing. Yeah. At some point I can see game companies doing more of that. <laughs> you liked us on Twitter, here's here's a new hat. Just thanks. You know what? Well, I mean they have the they have the Facebook games that they make that are like tie ins to their main games, so it's I not that so. different. It's bad. I don't know, like Stop. with 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 those add on games and like the, the card games that come out of those, uh, like the MMOs and whatnot, those we usually still see at the conventions. Um, but yeah, it, it, on the one side, it'd be nice to see um, ArenaNet ad conventions just, go, you, just so you can actually tackle the devs and ask them questions. Right. Um, but it's, yeah, you're probably right. They will, probably won't be at conventions. Yeah. Which is yeah. a bummer. I mean, like I said, uh, they, just ha- they have to have a reason to, you know, pack it all up and, and, and go there. And, okay. I mean, New? Like Anything new with you, sir? So, like always, I'm playing Victoria 2, won the American Civil War as the Confederates, abolished so, okay. slavery. I have something to say about Victoria 2. Yeah? I loaded that game up. Uh huh. And I attempted to go through the tutorials of that game. Oh. Is there that, a college a course I need to take to understand the, the complexity of that game? It's actually a four year university course with Okay, others. okay, see that, that, yeah. okay, that explains it. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to like just like fucking hold my hand through a scenario of that game because god damn, <laughs> they're shit. That game is intense. Yeah, it is pretty intense. They don't, they don't it, fuck it around. Is, it's like action packed and intense. I agree. Yeah, I wouldn't say so, action packed. It is, it is intense. About it. While I was fighting the American Civil War, I was fighting the good fight. And then I, I liberated the North from the lack of slavery. And then I abolished slavery altogether and made the <laughs> Confederate States of America and then fought war with Britain. And then, and then nothing See, all happened. of this stuff sounds really cool. And then, but the problem is I've seen how that game plays 
and the right. things I would have to do to have these kinds of stories. It's almost and, like Eve. Yeah. Eve. It, it Except Eve is, is like crazy because it's multiplayer. This is more like crazy because of what you do rather than what other people do. Yeah, but it's the same yeah, process. It's, it's those of ridiculous complexities. Though. This the setup to these amazing things, right? Is really boring. Yeah, or at least I guess tedious. So. That's true. Today I was like trying to play an uncivilized nation, um, Hawaii, because my friend got to being the second most powerful country in the world is Hawaii, the kingdom of Hawaii, of course. Um, and what, what I ended up doing was I, I started the game and then I all tabbed and I just had it run in the background because there was literally nothing to do. Um, and I guess partly it, there's some of that, but for the most times, I don't know, you're, you're driving at the wheel of your country. Um, you, you can driving do stuff. See, you say that, that, that just makes me want to play uh, Euro Truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That game's got greenlit on Steam. Which, which apparently, yeah. like, after you get past the silliness but of it's, it, it's actually, like, really yeah, fun to it's play. All, it's it's greenlit on Steam, but it's actually it's actually $10 cheaper on Amazon. You can get it for 29 But don't you want to support the devs, Durin? Why don't you want to support the devs? I, I'm still supporting buying Supporting the devs either, either way. way. I'm not buying I'm not picking I mean, it up on Pirate Bay. If you're Bay. a dev who makes Euro Truck simulators, you probably need the support. I'll be honest. They need that extra 10 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clearly. But then I can't um, put that 10 bucks into my race wheel. No. No, you can't. No, you can't. And the, the gear um, shifter. And, no, you need, and, and, you need like an authentic driver truck, or not truck driver. Yeah, truck driver cockpit, basically. Otherwise, I think I'll settle, I think I'll settle like for the hat. Trucker <laughs> hat. Well, because see, if I got the hat, trucker. then I can get then I can get track, uh, track IR. I guess and you then know. just a whole well, world of possibilities like open up. Oh. How much um, is track IR? Also, they I don't know. Probably too much, though. They did like a developer diary for a new Victoria expansion. I, I came to the realization of how sad at what kind of stuff I'm getting excited for nowadays. <laughs> it's like they announced features newspapers, which basically allows you to, which basically like sums up all of the things you've done in the last half year and then puts them into text format and just pops up as an event. So, and I so, became super excited for that. So and basically, then, Hitman. Right, and then it basically turned the national spending slider into three sliders, so I can control navy, land, and industry. And I'm like, so, oh shit, this is the greatest thing to happen to video games in so, a long time. So basically, Sim City then. Oh god, Sim it City. is like a, a war version of Sim City. The more he talks I'm just, about, I'm it. just trying to like reduce this down to the most basics. So just to like the, the fact yeah. that there's just yeah. times where you just have to wait. I'll simplify yeah. for you. If you if you like SimCity, buy Victoria Two. That's my recommendation. They're Third, basically don't listen the same to them. Game. Don't listen to them. I've, I've already bought SimCity. I can tell you they're not the same same game. <laughs> so excited for SimCity. Besides, oh. I got a slew of other glad. games that keep me busy until next weekend. I'm just glad I only spent six dollars on Victoria because oh. you got to get the House Divided expansion and then Darkest. <sighs> Parts or whatever it was called. The darkest um, parts. I guess also I've been playing. I think, I think um, Jeff knows all about Red the Orchestra. darkest parts. Yeah, Red Orchestra Two. I've sort of rediscovered it, and I just realized it's like the best game in terms of atmosphere of a war zone. There's a lot of tension and like grittiness when you like the feel of getting a shot and hitting someone in that game is just so rewarding. Were you like shitting on that game a few months ago? I was no. What when was I shitting on that game? I love Red Orchestra. I'm I'm pretty sure you were shitting on that game a few months ago. See, my first dream, which I fulfilled, was to be a Japanese high school girl and finding a hot love adventure. But my with, second with dream in life is to become a hero of Stalingrad, which Red Orchestra Two has let Definitely. me be a hero of Stalingrad. I don't even I don't even know, noob. I yeah I I don't want to. Is there anything else you've been playing there, sir, or? Just uh, <laughs> well, of course, I've been playing eight hours of Had a Full Boyfriend with Cynic, which is just oh, we we can find that about that there later. Are I guess such long stretches of boring. <sighs> it's gone to the fact that where I just open up Wikipedia and while Cynic's just clicking through dialogue, I'm just reading facts about sloths and panda bears. For example, did you know the maximum speed of a sloth on the ground is two meters per minute, and in the air. Or in in the trees, it's double that. At no, what's the what's the speed in the air? What's the terminal velocity? <laughs> um, it depends on what you throw it out of. Like a trebuchet could definitely get a lot more speed than a bolt, uh, catapult, but probably I don't know. 
Also, their grip is so strong that when they're like hung up on trees and like a poacher shoots them and kills them, like they'll still be hanging on to the tree after they're dead. Cool. Alrighty. Yeah. So third, what are you know. playing? Thank you, Duran. Um, I have been playing some Natural Selection Two. Is the new game I've been playing this week. So how is that? It's actually a lot of fun. The the very first thing after like getting into it, well, there, it's it's got a pretty big um, first boot process. Like you know, most Steam games or most games in general, like the, just the initial the initial boot uh, is tough uh, time wise. But then also your first time loading into a game, it's like. Uh, just two like two to three minutes of like you're you're loading the sh- the shaders for the first time and everything, oh, wow. but after that it's pretty it's pretty acceptable. Um, the other really cool thing is they have tutorial videos, like really in depth ones, like a I'd say twelve to fourteen tutorial videos. Okay, I thought you were gonna say they were twelve to fourteen minutes long each. <laughs> no, they're like I think the longest one's seven minutes. They're anywhere from three to three to five minutes, and it's actually it's a YouTube overlay. So oh. as soon as you like, you click it, it just loads up in game the YouTube video of it. That's pretty neat. Because actually, that was going to be my next question: is like, is it as impenetrable as the first game? Um, in terms of just like really hard to get into, like yeah, like really hard, really it's, hard to get to kind of grasp the the basic functions of the game without having your team trash you constantly. It's pretty in depth. I only watched the first like three videos. Uh, and they mainly they mainly just explain stuff which I already knew, and they very they very much uh, repeated a lot of the same things. But assuming you're not being a commander, you can get by just watching those first few videos and then just following somebody. Right. Uh, the biggest you- thing, yeah, the biggest thing I, I noticed was communication is key, especially with voice comms. And they actually have an in-game voice set up, and uh, if you have a um, commander, because for anybody who doesn't know what Natural Selection 1 and Natural Selection 2 was, it's it's a first-person shooter, um, but it has an RTS element to it where one person will play as a commander. Uh, and with our uh, Natural Selection 2, it's one, uh, the aliens and Marines each have a commander. Uh, basically, I got I picked this up now as a joke because I wanted to play a good aliens versus Marines game. Because there's not any good ones out right now that are what new. What are you talking about? There's aliens, colonial Marines. I said oh, good yeah. one. Actually, I heard, the, I heard the multiplayer that game has is not been terrible. Been in development for so long, it can't be bad. Yeah, it's, it's not a, terrible, but I'm just going to play Left 4 Dead instead because that's what it's based off. Of. The, the, oh, the, the funny, the funny part about the the funny part about the multiplayer in that one is um, about it being you know pretty decent and the single player not is from what I had heard, the multiplayer was actually the only part that Gearbox worked on. Yeah, they outsourced the entire. So there's something campaign. I'm curious about with. The uh, Aliens, Clone Marines multiplayer versus Natural Selection 2. And that is. <laughs> Talk about Guild Wars 2. No, later. Um, but we, it, we will shortly, it, don't worry. It, we, we will talk about Guild Wars 2. What little bit of news there are. But um, the starting alien uh, unit can walk on walls and in, in the ceiling and whatnot. And yeah. actually, that's what he's designed to do. If you're walking on the ground, it's a higher chance. You, you have a shorter life, lifespan. Yeah. Um, the aliens colonial, colonial marines one is like the don't the aliens climb on the ceilings and whatnot too. Mm-hmm. The I'm, I'm just gonna call them the dogs. I can't remember what their names are uh, for natural selection, but that was very easy to start. Like you just look at the wall and you start walking on it. You look at the ceiling, you start walking on it. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious if the um, if it's that easy to get into for so. Aliens with um, natural selection two. When you're climbing on the walls and ceilings, does it adjust your camera so that kind of your camera is always directly behind your guy? So like if you're on the ceiling, is your camera upside down? Well, first off, it's first person. Right. I forgot um, about that. That's right. Okay. And for people who don't know, when you're playing as the aliens, the camera is inside their mouth, and so you right. see their teeth on the top and bottom. So is it like that game, that abstract indie game Duran played? What is it called? Proxy per. I have not seen that game. I have no idea what you're talking that about. The game you're talking about, where, you, where you're like, the level design is really bad, and it was mailed by a one-man team. It was like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Oh, you're talking about Antichamber? Antichamber. No, that's more of a puzzle game, and people aren't trying to kill you in that game. Um, oh, God, where did Noob go? That... Noob? 
Are you there? One second. Sorry, okay. I accidentally right. closed that off. Someone no, that's fine. My room. No, but I mean, like, it's it's a good game, and I guess we can segue to Guild Wars by saying that it has a lot of the same vibes when you're playing World versus World as when you're playing After Selection Two. Communication is key. Uh, definitely want to run in groups, and it does have uh, like it does have RTS elements of like build this, hold this point. These are the choke points. Um, there's no siege to speak of, but it, it was nice going into a shooter that was naturally team based. Like it's, you very much want to work with other people. And if you have a commander that is not communicating or not good at just being a commander, you're probably gonna have a bad time. Um, like, whereas a good commander that's always talking, always pointing out, we need help here. We need help here. Moving people around. You're going to have a more fun time. Uh, so anybody who's like an armchair general in World vs. World that wants to try it, go for it. I'm happy to run around and shoot things, and you can tell me where to go. So to quickly answer your question about um, the comparison to uh, Colonial Marines, uh, with the aliens in that one, basically, it's third person. Um, and the reason yeah. I asked the camera question is because in uh, Alien vs. Predator, the, the last Alien game that had a multiplayer to it, uh, when you were on the walls and ceilings, your camera followed your character, Flip. so you went sideways yeah. and upside down incredibly disorienting when you're playing as the Xenomorphs. Uh, so the way they've solved that in this one is your camera's always well, they're facing the same way. In the shoes of a Xenomorph. Same, same with uh, NS2. So basically, um, with this one, your camera's always, you know, ground is always on the bottom. Ceiling is always on the top. Um, yep. Which makes it really, really easy then to quickly maneuver around walls and ceilings very easily. So yeah, they definitely solved that problem at least. Yep. Um, I guess the last thing is like the, the the quick look for it is pretty good. They actually got the developers to sit down and talk about it. Um, it's very much a good community game, which fits well with the Giant Mom community. Just like it's it's worth looking into, uh, at least with a quick look. I think it's it it is a buy to play. I think it's like twenty bucks. But check it on Steam. Wait till a holiday. Maybe you can get it on sale. Yeah. But I think that's all we have for. What we've been on playing Guild Wars Two, yeah, yeah, we can go into Guild Wars Two. Yeah, that, we that can. Is what we've been playing. Um, so, did you know Guild Wars Two is an MMORPG developed by ArenaNet? The first was released in 2012, and it was a sequel to the Guild Wars One, which had sequels. Guild Wars. Yes, yeah, that, that's right from that the wiki page. Out. Right from um, the wiki page. No, but there's been there's been a little bit of news. We aren't going to go too in depth on it, um, but we're gonna we're going to go with a little bit of news. We can talk about basically on our speculations. Uh, the last Lincoln cast talking about guild missions uh, and a few other things, and then finish it off with uh, some shout outs and some listener questions, um, and then call it a, some listener questions. Well, it, a, a listener question. The listener question. <laughs> yes, we uh, cynic picked out before he. Uh, had to leave for abandoned some us before he ditched abandoned us. Well, us. Tell the truth before he ditched us at the prom. Let's just—I mean, let's put it out there. Yeah, he ditched us at the prom for money, so I, I can't fault him too much. That whore. But yeah, it, it's uh, yeah, we 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 have a, a listener question, but for news wise, the there was there was a post from Colin Johansson as well as um, probably mispronounce mispronounce this, but Leia R- uh, Rivera, sure, talking about the new guild missions. Uh, and we speculated last week or two weeks ago or whatnot. What, what did we talk about? We talked about um, instance based. Yeah. Some in like Claw Island using that those resources. Um, did did you read up on this at all, Duran? Or uh, yeah, I, well, a little bit. I, I read through that post and watched the video when it was released. Okay. Would you like to just tell the folks about it or? Um, not if you have it up, because I did that when it was released, and I have slept. Okay, time. fine. <laughs> Otherwise, I can pull it up real quick. Um, they are going to be all open world. Um, yeah, right. In terms of like, it, it's all going to happen PVE zones. There was a bit of rumorisms about it only being on Claw Island, and yet some of the the uh, the stuff we've seen from the videos and just the general description of them seems to say it's going to be in other zones. Um, we don't have a full list of what zones it's going to be in or not in, but they're going to be uh, a guild bounty, which uh, you have to. There, there's going to be various targets that will spawn for the uh, orders, priory vigil, and whispers, and your guild, as well as anybody else helping out, has to just track them down and fight them. And 
I guess it's going to be some sort of boss fight, like world world zone fight, which should be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have the sudden worry that just like you're, you're doing your own thing off in the map, fighting by yourself, shit to you, and then suddenly this champion spawns right behind you and just <laughs> stomps you. Yeah, and then you have this guild to thank for. It's like, geez, guys, go. <laughs> Reporting this guild, so we, we might ruining my Guild Wars experience. I imagine at least we get one or two people on the forums just hating about that. Um, the other thing is yeah. Guild Trek, which I'm actually kind of, I'm pensively excited for. Now, which uh, one is that one? Get, uh, well, it, it's where you have to, uh, it's going to give you a list of locations that you guys have to run around and find on a map, I think. Mm. Um, it's it's not too descriptive, it's the Tyrion Explorer Society is a challenge for you. Find those locations before time runs out. I think you might be turned into an animal then, because there's a couple of videos where you are turned into, like, there's one where you're as chickens and one is wolves. Okay. Um, so, yes? Sure. Is that the fable? I believe that one is, like, cross map. Like, it's not just build houses. That's not there's, one where it takes one place that's supposed to be cross map, yeah. I'm not sure if that's Guild Trek or Guild Rush, but it's. Uh, I do like how they're trying their best to make because make uh, well, what people had fun doing in Guild Wars One, which was racing across the map, yeah. like across the world. Wait, what? Racing well, um, across Gu- the- uh, Guild Rush. <laughs> still one I, of my fun memories. I thought, I thought Guild Rush was the like jumping puzzle one, or is that, or is that like actually just called Guild Puzzle? That is Guild Puzzle. That is straight okay. up Guild okay. Puzzle. And I am pretty sure that that is where we will see. Um, Josh Foreman's fabled uh, I want to be the guy super hard puzzle. Oh, man. Only because it, only because he said he has a whole team of people working on this puzzle. <laughs> and it's the first time they've ever had a team working on a puzzle. It makes me think like it's this would fit the bill yeah. in terms of just like this giant freaking puzzle. It looked like there was a maze that was changing in there to just to add oh. more confusion to it. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that one, if, great. if if Foreman is behind that, I'm excited about it. Um, see, did we, did we cover Guild Challenge? Uh, no. No. Um, these challenges leverage your existing uh, event system, but are spe- specifically geared to require a multi-group coordinated play to succeed. So gather your guild and see if you're up to the challenge. That is not very descriptive at all. Way to go, so read it, it sounds like it's it's um, you know dynamic event stuff that is focused towards, like, it's probably like, like we started off, and there will be like multiple dynamic events around the zone, and they all have to be dealt with. What, what I'm really like. hoping is they use these as a way to improve the story, like to continue the story of the zone. Um, yeah. But I think that, like, on the one side, I just want that because I want the story to continue for the zones. But with that model, I fear it might be a. Uh, it's a very finite lifespan of that story then, because people are just going to want to keep repeating that. Like if A is where we start at release and then B is this first step out of it, mm-hmm. they don't really want to add C because people want to keep doing B or I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, we'll, we'll see about that next week when they give us the patch notes. Yeah. Uh, Re- regarding the, the guild missions, I hope like for the first few weeks, it's not like these uh, areas are going to be like fucking laggy as hell because every single asshole and their guild is going to be running around Queensdale or something doing quests. Well, I think that's part of the reason why, it's like, it, it, that, that'll be alleviated somewhat with the sheer number of different types of things people can do. Like, sure, if everybody yeah. chose, you know, Guild Race, um, right. and, and maybe there's only two or three zones that that takes place in, or one or two, then yeah, that would probably lag things out quite a bit. But, I mean, if you've got, I mean, what is it, like, five or six different types of events? Right. Does that sound right? Uh, right now, there's, uh, I want to say, yeah, five events. Five okay. types of events. So five different types of events. I imagine each event is doable in multiple zones. So yeah, that, like that's are they doing all zones or only like only certain zones allow for certain event types, um, and then then when you go to research it is are you researching the Queensdale Guild Bounty or are you just researching general uh, Guild Bounty? Yeah, these are things that I think about, and I'm not sh- like if if they gave us more news about it, we'd be excited. But they like to tease stuff as Arena is is known to do. Right. One other thing, I guess, after uh, Guild Challenge is Guild Rush. Test your skills with uh, a mad dash over herring, terrain, traps, and other hidden dangers. That, I think, is going to be the Guild Race. 
Uh, and I think that is going to be the one that spans across zones. Um, like you'll probably get into some like form, like a wolf or something, and that's going to involve the jumping and all that. Yeah, that one actually sounds like probably the most interesting one to me. Yeah, it it really like that. If they put a lot of care into that one, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, and then all these will get you. Okay, first off, all these are unlocked through the upgrade system, and they've actually said on the forums. Uh, Anthony Orden, one of the game designers, said that the first upgrade that will be available, you, you use your influence in the upgrade system, is guild bounties. And it's through the Art of War level 5 upgrade. Which has a lot of people very mad. Mm. Because let's say it's a small time PvE guild who doesn't want to do anything with structured PvP or world versus world. Yeah. Then they find this really cool PVE thing that you do in PVE zones is at the final tier of a bunch of upgrades that are all world versus world and structured PVP. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I could see that, but I feel like even a small guild that has been around for more than you know a month or two potentially could... I mean, they could have had those unlocked by now, right? I mean, I, I'm hearing of guilds that have like nearly a million or or over a million uh yeah. influence points just banked after everything's been upgraded. And then so, like we usually keep we are constantly using up uh, upgrades and we usually stay at 60 60k. Yeah. Uh, but so it, I, like, I feel like even a small guild like especially given the advance notice that we have now, you know, go ahead and start dropping your points into Art of War now if you need to and get yourself there. Like I don't I, well, I don't think it's really going like, to be this a big isn't issue. really this isn't really an advance notice because people like you you have to be crazy to like me to go through the forums looking for news to find this. Well, that's true. Or yeah. listen to a podcast where somebody goes <laughs> to the news, listening for crazy stuff. Um, but it's just like it's it'd be nicer if they were a bit um, more like, hey, we're introducing this, and this is what you need to do pre- to prepare for it. Um, yeah. Like right. people expected politics five or something, and it's like no, it's art of war. So. That is some people burn the wrong way. Eventually, it'll smooth itself out. Yeah. But yeah, expect a lot of guild bounties on the uh, opening weekend to be going on. That is weird that they are unlocking the system with a single type because that that is going to kind of go back to Noob's issue of like places being very very crowded because initially everybody has to do the same one. I I was on the assumption that they were all unlocked from the beginning. Like once you unlocked it, you unlocked all of them, and you could choose where you wanted to go first. But yeah, I mean, if that's the case, especially if they are locked to like certain zones, that could potentially be an issue. Well, and he just said the first one is guild bounties, which which requires Art of War level five. Like, maybe I don't know if they're releasing them to us at a staggering rate, or if it's just after guild bounties, the next upgrade is guild um, trek and guild challenge. If it's you, if we get all of them on day one, and just the first one you reach is bounties, I don't know. But yeah, it's. It it is controversial, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it, like it, it's not going to be an issue, obviously, later on. But just that initial rush of everybody doing it day one, um, we could we could potentially see like you know launch day levels of of lag in zones again for at least oh, a short God. while. Well, and then the uh, the other side of this coin is. Even if your guild is not the one doing this, you can still participate and get the reward for it, which is you get XP, but coin, less, all that. Right? Yeah, but yeah, you do get less, and it's guild merits, so they've added another currency to the, the game, which um, I could care less about, but like, Durin, I know you've had some uh, kerfuffles about it. Not, not, not necessarily so much like with this one, though, I do still feel like it could, they could have, instead of incre- or instead of adding this whole new currency, I really do feel like they could have folded it into influence. Um, It'd be nice but if it's, they could a currency exchange. That way there's more motivation for people to earn this and not give a shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, like I said before, uh, when I brought it up the last time, like it's just, it's more so a worry if they continue down this road as opposed to thinking of in, in, like creative ways to incorporate new stuff into their current currency systems right and on the, on that same subject of releasing stuff in the currency systems how last week we talked about um maybe them get, like adding more of the um like with these guild merits you can buy the 
guild shield or the guild um not great sword yeah, chess piece or something like the guild armor um and then maybe just cosmetic stuff it, they've come up with a few other ideas for things you could spend the guild merits on and that is reduced waypoint costs which seems kind of crazy for me which it's, it's almost gonna be like it's a standard uh for guild to, to spend that on uh the guild missions themselves can be repurchased with the merits and a, uh, a combo banner, which I think I remember them saying is just you can turn yourself into a banner of your guild, ta- like a, your guild banner. Hmm. And the example they gave was after taking a point in World vs. World, you stand on the walls and make a banner of yourself to show everyone how awesome you are. That's um, pretty fucking narcissistic. Okay. That's a little narcissistic. I don't know. Well, plus well, everyone. Tell it's me a narcissistic if it's a guy with a commander tag and then he turns himself into a banner. <laughs> yeah, I will not be doing that. Uh, and the last one, which I'm still a little uh, PO'd about, but a gold find bonus. And I mean, like a, this gold find, I'm less angry about. But still, it's like it's to get better at this game, you have to um, do these events. Gold find, I'm in this aspect of it, I'm okay, but getting gear that is a gold find bonus, it just seems more towards a gear grind and less like a skill grind. But like picking up gold isn't really the best way to earn money, is it? Is it I... Um, I am not an economist, and I'm sure there's lots of people like, well, getting picking up gold is a, a surefire way to get more money. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but at that point, like, wouldn't magic find be better sure. because you have a better chance yeah. of getting. You know, blues and greens and selling that stuff. Like, that would be a way better um, way of making money than picking up gold. Yes and no. It's Well, uh, the other thing that, that we can talk about with the news is they finally accepted the fact that there was an issue with the loot tables uh, in that uh, people, would always, people since launch have been saying that uh, whenever they would kill a champion or just or any, any big tough boss, world boss, what have you, uh, depending on how they contributed, didn't necessarily equate to the amount of stuff they were supposed to get like the, the right, right loot table mm-hmm. and they kept kept coming back saying loot tables are all are all correct they're all correct we've checked them again and again it turns out the system used to check how your participation level is compared to the amount of loot table you get was not working or something to that effect yeah and so that is also going to get fixed uh so yeah maybe maybe magic find will be will be coming back a resurgence in that now that when you kill a champion you are actually going to get a blue or better item. Mm. Whereas before I've killed champions and gotten nothing. Yeah. Uh, I take, take it back. I got a glob of gobby, gobby goo. Oh, well, I mean, you got something. That's man. yeah. That's money. <laughs> moving on up to East side. All right. That's money in the bank. I don't man. think I've ever had one of those before. Run, run Ascalon catacombs. You'll get a lot of it. <laughs> What's Ascalon catacombs? Uh, Ascalon catacombs. It's the level 30 to 35 dungeon in the char zones, which if you want to see it before they change it, you should check it out before this week. Because yeah. Colin tweeted that uh, the – well, d- during an, uh, a lunch interview or something, Colin uh, – they, they asked him a bunch of questions and people post them all up on Twitter. But Colin said that all the bosses in uh, Ascalon Catacombs have been completely rebuilt for the February release along with some of the open world champions too. Right. Hmm. Uh... Very much, hmm, especially when they say yeah. all the bosses in AC. So yeah, exactly. Kohler is going to get a good change, which I love Kohler. He's he's my example of this is a skill fight. Uh, but then also the story bo- story bosses. Do you think they're going to change those around? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think it's probably going to be just explorable. It's not yeah, like people are like running story. There's definitely a few st- explorable ones that need fixing. Pretty much all the final bosses. Right. Um, only because the Howling King and uh, Rumbleus, uh, Colossus Rumbleus are effectively the exact same fight, and then yeah. the Ghost Eater is just a joke of a fight. No one even the, the turrets are, are terror bad, um, but yeah, it's it. I'm I'm curious to see how they're going to change that around while still keeping the same level in place. And I'm maybe assuming they're just trying to shake things up. Maybe. I mean, like they said, they wanted to revamp all the dungeons, and so we are seeing this is the first step of it. Well, actually, the second step. The first step was uh, getting rid of the waypoints. And have you guys done any dungeons since then? And have you noticed a change in uh, 
quality, I guess, of the I dungeon group. I can't say I've done dungeons. <laughs> You're playing a lot, time. though. You need to do dungeons. <sighs> but, like, I'm a lone wolf, and I like wolf lonely. Yeah. But Happy. the protagonist um, needs his side characters. So are you, are no, you saying, I'm like, playing on the main character, oh, not, not the protagonist. Oh, yeah. So are, are, you, but, are you asking like if I, if you know if we've done some since they made the change to the yeah the waypointing oh yeah yeah and I mean they were they were fine they, so they, I mean it, they rebalanced them properly so that you know corpse running didn't need to be a strategy where it was a strategy yeah so so after after that initial what change like? like assuming this is from the same team that is the PVE dungeon team what are your thoughts on the the AC reboot are you ex- excited are there any bosses you'd like to see changed in a specific way? Well, I mean, like you said, there's those two in AC that are basically the same fight. So I would I would definitely like to see one of them changed. Um, the fight makes a lot more sense for Colossus Rumblus because of the big open area. You have a lot a lot of a lot of area to move around, whereas uh, the I'm forgetting his name, the King guy. Um, you don't have a, uh, are, you, are you talking about the explorable end boss or the story end boss? I'm sorry. Adelburn is the story in boss. Right. The one thing I could say change uh, about that is just uh, you're having to see blue fire on top of blue mist for for his for his end fight, and that's just that's a tough tell for people. Yeah. I okay on that subject. Um, so is it just me, or does it seem like sometimes the red circles they need to make those a little thicker, right? Yeah, those they are be, at times nice. be really it, it, hard to see. It would be nice if there, in the interface options or something, there was a scale you could change to make the the circle bolder. Yeah, right. Because there are times where it just maybe it's the co- the color of the ground there or the angle I'm looking at it. But there are times where I just straight up like would miss it well, if I wasn't if I wasn't. It's really like a yarn it. of yeah. string. Yeah. Something I just thought about thought about, but those are red circles on top of a brown, very often like a brown floor, mm-hmm. uh, right. especially with with uh, AC. Yeah. For some, for a lot of people who are colorblind, I know a few of them. That's effectively brown on brown. Yeah, right. Which is just the the red spectrum for for some colorblind folks just doesn't show up, and so that's got to be even worse for them. Yeah, so I mean, like even like a maybe setting in there to change the color, like a setting like ideally a, a setting in there to change the color and thickness would be the best. Right. Yeah. Um, that'll never happen, but. At least the color change most likely will never happen. They would. I don't know. They would, they would be more likely to implement to, a color blind. What are you mode. talking about, Duran? This is the biggest podcast that developers listen to from Marina Net. <laughs> Next week when I go to Seattle, I, I say I'm going to a comic convention. I'm secretly yeah. going to the Marina Net offices, just kicking the door open and being like, "Yo, fix these things." They're and then they're going to be like, "Oh my god, it's the guy from the Link Cast. Can we get your autograph? We love your podcast." And I was like, "Wait, you're not noob." Yeah. And then it turns really? out he pulled off the mask, and it was noob the whole time. <laughs> and it was pull off the right. mask against Ryan Davis' creepy face. Thurb's part is already pre-recorded, and it's just me doing Thurb's voice. Thurb has died for a long time. <laughs> He's dead. God, a creepy face. I love it. I love that uh, face. So, sorry for people listening to the audio, but we have we are finally doing a live right. show. It's going to be an audio version like we always yeah. do. I totally forgot about that. All right. <laughs> we are now streaming, and with with the lack of Cynic being our fourth member, or anybody being a fourth member, we are replacing it with a creepy face of Ryan Davis and or Jeff Gersman. Right. Uh, so to tune in next time we do this, which I don't know if we will. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I guess other people, things. Maybe uh, when Cynic shows up and doesn't abandon us. The modifications to the Commander book are coming, according to Colin Johansson, with more features. But they will remain character bound. Hmm. This is something um, I guess we can speculate about. Yeah, like I'm you guessing a lot, a lot of people are guessing. Book. A lot of people are guessing that like you'd be able to finally place the like map points that you were kind of always supposed to be able to place. Yeah, um, um, I, I can see it as something like that, as well as uh, making it so it's like artillery here or uh, like support yeah. this point. Really, I think what they just need to do is make it so it's a supersized party group. So you can see everyone on the yeah. mini map. There's a special, like, it changes the nameplate to a different color. And I think that is probably the best option. Air going all well, the grievances I had last or two weeks ago or whatever, that would be a big step for the, for 
World versus World, like people enjoying it. I feel like the like being able to see everybody kind of in the um in the uh I forget, I forget what they call the group now. Squad. Um, the squad. Um that should go for everybody. That ain't, that shouldn't even just be commander. Like that should be something everybody should be able to turn on. Right. Like, it is ridiculous well, that, that I can be a part of the squad and I have no idea who's in the squad. Yeah. Well, no, no, I I mean that. I mean, like, everybody should be able to see her, but because... Okay, I thought you were saying as, like, I, one of the commander things. If I just join in and I see a commander icon, I don't know if that guy's by himself or has a ton of people or if he's a dead body that right. is just, like, refused to waypoint back. And so if yeah. I join the squad, I can see, oh, there's 20 people over there and there's three people right next to me that are on the way over there. Mm-hmm. I should join up with them. Uh, right. But it's yeah, I'd like to see that happen. I doubt it's going to happen. I think yeah. you're right. It's probably just going to be, hey, let's put some artillery here. Like one one nice thing that would, I mean, at least if they would do this, it would I think help a lot with commander specifically. Obviously, you know, being the commander thing, um, is instead of maybe like or maybe on top of being able to place things on the map, like you know, to do things here or go here or whatever the case may be, um, would be to allow you to like kind of in the world put like a kind of a beacon like you know like you're saying like put artillery here but rather than have people having to look on the map have it just be a big ass beacon of light with an art- artillery symbol on it saying like basically notifying everyone yeah as, you know the commander wants a beat or wants an artillery there so whoever's nearby right. will place one like that would be which the best. Ha- having played natural selection 2 that is really well integrated with the game yeah like not only on the mini map but it they're like arrows show up and it shows up on the on the map it's very very well done check the game out it's good <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, another big thing, uh, orange swords won't show up if there are less than about 25 people uh, after February's update. So uh, I would ask wasn't you sure about, about exact that. Numbers. Because I know you tend to like to run the little hit squads, and the problem with your hit squads is like every time you like begin to attack something, the swords show up mm-hmm. and you're immediately stopped. Um, right. So this kind of seems like it might allow you to finally do that properly, right? This allows with a bit more flexibility with the group, but we're st- like we're still going to run with the same issues. What it was before was uh, we just we would kill the guards and we get orange swords very quickly, but that would stop. Like then we just wouldn't attack anything. Um, and yes, we're attacking a supersized point that has cannons and oil and everything. But if all twenty people are just trying their best to stop everybody from coming in, and you have three people working rams or something. Yes, you aren't taking down the cannons and the oil, uh, but I mean, like, if you stop everyone from coming in, you should be okay. Now you can have people taking on the like. I think this is a good thing because it can it can help with that initial like two minutes. It, it uh, there won't be much of a response unless people are watching because it, it'll stop the, the orange swords, but you'll still get the little X on top of the actual point saying this point is under contention. And if you attack a uh, a, a keep or a castle that has a waypoint. Mm-hmm. It will block the waypoint from being active, so people immediately know I can't waypoint there. There's people attacking well, there. I should check that out. I mean, sure, if people are paying attention, but I mean, let's be real here. Most people load into Love Love, look for the commander icon and or um, cross swords, and that's where they head. Yeah, most people. Right. Yeah, that that is correct. Uh, but I've noticed, like, if you attack a a keep that has a waypoint, yeah, you're gonna get a response even if you're being sneaky. Um, just because you aren't I mean, drawing swords, they they notice. Yeah, but it's I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like you, you're, you're talking about t- attacking a keep though. Like when you run your hit squads, you don't tend to attack keeps. You tend to to be hitting like like the towers and the um, the supply area. Like th- that, those are what you tend to hit, right? Um, I hit keeps, but not with the intention of sieging them. I will often just take down two doors and disappear, and then they repair it, and then there goes half their supply and key in point. I see. And then I do it again, and then they have no supply, and then I'm like. <laughs> Hey, you actual Genius. commander, you attack this place. I'm going to keep it in towers. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't been doing that as much lately. I've just, I've just been doing, I've actually been doing the dailies. Crazy, I, I know. Thought, I thought wow. you quit doing dailies um, I like having money. It's like I can do the dailies and sell the, um, the coins. mystic coins mm. for a little bit of money. I'm, I'm back up to like 40 gold, so I'm happy. Mm. But yeah, it's, I think this is going to be a good thing. It's a good step. Um, but it's it's definitely a step towards the end goal. This isn't this isn't a fix. Yeah, but definitely. it's it's nice to see. Uh, right. Um, let's see. Guild mission second place in Towson Cove. We already covered that. 
there will Guild be other Hall. legendaries in the future, but priority is resolving the way to get precursors, including the scavenger hunt. Which the scavenger hunt, anybody doesn't know, is they're trying to find a really long way. I guess the best example was Ocarina of Times, the uh, the Goron sword, just traveling across the world back and forth. Cynic always liked making his uh, example of making a sacrifice on at, at the right time in, in, when the moon was full on top of the priestess of Dwayne's altar. Um, sort of like that was a step in the process. Right. But it, it's, they've said that that's not going to happen for a while. And so announcing, yeah, there's going to be other legendaries. That sounds like it's going to be other legendaries when an expansion's about to hit. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. if, yeah, if the if if scavenger hunt isn't for a while and the legendaries are further off than that, we're probably looking at like next year. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice <laughs> to know, yes, it's a possibility. Thank you, Colin. But now, do you think it's going to be like more legendary weapons or do you think they're going to go ahead and move on to legendary armor at this point? Um, he he said of uh, combinations, um, not like not weapons. Okay. So the, yeah, pro- probably like we were thinking of whole armor sets. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's good to at least get that confirmation that it sounds like it will be whole armor sets as opposed. Well, to, he said possibility. Well, about as much of confirmation as, as we is, can get from Colin Johansson. Yeah. As is as is very <laughs> telling with ArenaNet, very few things are set in stone. Was he grinning yeah. while he said it? I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was. He was grinning with that that uh, char- he somehow, sardonic. He somehow face. has taught himself to grin while eating his food. Yeah, it's a very sardonic smile, full of evil intentions. Uh, and I guess one last bit of news: uh, anybody who's ever like not necessarily played the trading post, but even looked on there for like gear to get, uh, has been very annoyed with the fact that you can't preview stuff. You'd have yeah. to buy it preview it then and then sell it if you don't like the the preview of it. Preview is now coming to the trading post. Thank Woo! fucking god. It was oh the du- like god. I don't understand. Like that's one of those that's one of those things that you just don't launch an yeah. MMO without. It's a yeah. very good idea. You should do it. Um especially is, especially it, given that we have items on on the auction house like that are non precursors, non legendaries that are still going for hundreds of gold. Yeah, like, I think this is, yeah. will be a big step towards people who are maybe maybe or not maybe or maybe not trying to get a legendary, but just trying to get a good look post eighty, uh, maybe with the the end goal of getting a legendary item. Right. Yeah, they can look through the they can just spend like oh, I'll spend an hour going through the trading post looking at exotic swords, trying to playing dress up. Good. Yeah. Now, do we know yet if like all particle effects will show up finally in preview, or is that still I, off? I believe how. The, the trading post preview is going to be is there will be a um, sheathed like option, a combat red like combat attacking option, oh, wow, and a unsheathed but standing still option. So that's at least going further than I would have expected. Yeah, well, it's uh, which, which is a surprise. I yeah. well, I guess since they're working on it, they'll take it a step further. Yeah, yeah, I can't find my source for that, but I think that's like that is if that's the case, that's pretty well polished, and that's that is. Super acceptable in my book. I'm not sure it makes up for the fact that this wasn't at launch, but or at yeah, least it's, it's nice to see they at least put that extra effort into it. Then, yep. It's like they have all the big stuff, but they're they're missing all the small stuff. Well, all they don't have all the big stuff. We stuff. still don't have a looking for group tool. Yeah, we there's no but, looking for group tool. Well, at least there's guild halls. No, no guild halls. No, no guild halls. No, no player housing. I mean. Well, player housing, I couldn't give a shit about. But a game called Guild Wars, oh, yes, yeah. I fucking yeah, know. Yeah. It has nothing well, okay. to do with guilds. But... I'm okay <sighs> with not having guild halls yet, so long, so long as there is a last online feature. Because pre-show, <laughs> we were talking about like some of, the, some of our Australian buddies who play in the guild. And I'm like, man, I haven't seen those guys in months. I wonder. Yeah, what they, they must have quit now. Guild Wars a long time ago. And Noob's like, no, they're on just really early in the morning. Yeah, when yeah. I get up. At six thirty to check what's going on in Guild Wars, everyone's like, "Oh God, it's New Verama." I didn't know he played this game. And and that's, I guess which is funny. That's pretty much the reaction you get every time yeah. you log into the game, right? Um, but yeah, it's it's that would be a very awesome tool for just people to know. Okay, these are really inactive people. I should move these to just like a, a second guild or something. Yeah. It's it's something that, as Duran has been saying the whole time, these are. Th- Features that need to be in an MMO in this day and age. 
Yeah. Sleepy is arena net. You don't you don't launch your MMO without real basic creatures. It's like, like it's that. like li- living in the eighteen hundreds and like there are people on the other side of the world you don't know whether they're alive or not. And that's basically what's going on in Guild Wars. <laughs> like people in your guild, do they play this game? Who the fuck knows? We don't know. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, uh, Durham. Was there any other news that you dug up that I want to talk about? Or um, no, I think that pretty much is about all we really had. Um, it's been kind of a slower week. I mean, it's, you know, the week leading up to this, yeah. this big patch, and and also like you know, kind of rounding out the month, which means we should, I imagine, shortly after that patch hits, we'll hear about what's coming up in March. Yeah, right. the, the big patch is going to be coming is is next week. It has to be because that's the end of February. And they, they keep referring to it as the February update. So that's when we're going to probably get a um, February, like the, the patch notes and stuff in physical. These are the actual things that are changing. And so next week's podcast probably a bit more in depth and we can go like hopefully by that time we'll have been able to do a couple of these guild missions and talk about them. Yeah. Oh, here's a completely original idea that I didn't get from chat from a person named Enti Fool. Let's talk about how February won't have any major story stuff. Well, you, and, like the, um, the, well, basically the, I think they mean like the, the, yeah, the fire and frost stuff like is, is moving at a very yeah. slow pace and Oh, super slow pace. February, basically. Like, like, like I said, like this is kind of the first month where we haven't seen any story stuff at all. Right. I mean, we won't, it sounds like until probably next month then. And that's right. when... Yeah, it sort of was like the beginning of uh, January was the prelude, and so we have we've had all of January and all of February as the prelude, and starting March because at the end of February is when they kick off the ga- the storm, right? Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, well, and 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 it wouldn't be so bad if there was at least something to the prelude, but I mean, there's not. There's no. There are some some refugees walking in. That I can nail some signs with my daggers. It's not even real. Like the, the, only now have there been refugees walking. Before it was just dead bodies. Yeah. And so, oh, you want to be a volunteer? You loot these dead bodies <laughs> and put up these signs, and then you start seeing refugees walking. And they've been they've added a few events as well, uh, which actually it's I'm glad they've uh, used the. Uh, there is a geyser pickup rock put on top of geyser technology that was developed during the Karka event to be events like these. Um, but it's it's been a very slow burn for this, and they've been it it's they they've been building this up for a long time, and I think just a lot of people are getting burnt out of, about the way Rena builds stuff up and then just waits forever to release it. Yeah, yeah. and, and especially like just, especially given like the, they were you know they they released phase one or whatever, and then the phase two, which was basically refugees walking. Um, yeah. And and then after that, like, came out and like, yeah, this is going to be a year long story thing we're doing. And like, I saw that. And I'm just like, I we were originally what? like, this is going to be like a I four officially month, four don't month care about this anymore, because if this is going to be a year long and this is the pace you're moving at, I'll see you guys in four months. Yeah. Because then things might have changed a little bit. Which I have to wonder if that might just be the best thing for everybody is just to put this game down for like. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not even saying put it down for. for I keep playing this game. No. I'm but not just, even saying like put the game down. I'm just saying like I will care about Fire and Frost or Flame and Frost or whatever, um, you know, in four months when things have changed because I think it's going to take a good amount of time before change. we really start seeing some some significant changes to it. Well, I mean, they are spreading it throughout the year, and we're we haven't even scratched March yet, I guess. So it's not it's not unexpected for us to. <laughs> All right. Um, not so no, much content. I, no, I, I I need to clear my name here because Noob <laughs> says I was having fun playing Alien Colonial Marines. For the record, I would not. I don't think I would pay. I don't think I would allow somebody to pay me to play that game. Are you sure? If they box, you box, you the game. Pay you. Yeah. One million dollars. <laughs> One million dollars. Uh, I, I can't speak yeah, to. It, I can't speak to Thurb's uh, Japanese porn games. You're so creepy sometimes. You're you're as creepy as Ryan Davis's creepy pictures. Um, but yeah, it, it's as much as I, I like the idea of the person, the, the living story. Um, it it still has to flesh itself out. So I'm not. I'm I'm waiting. Yeah, and I mean, literally, that's everybody's waiting because yeah, we've seen all you know five minutes there is to experience of the the living story right now. It's not. <laughs> it is not very, not very lively. It is. It's, 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 it's nice in a coma. Let's just say. It's on life support at best. 
but yeah, I, I think that's the end of the news. Um, there was one last thing we can go talk about, and that's uh, there were a few uh, shout outs Cynic told me to uh, give people props for. First off of which was Hawks, who is actually in the chat right now. Uh, so just thank you for listening, sir. And uh, Sky Child, I'm uh, pretty sure from the forums, but uh, way to go, sir. And a Jeff LaRue, who I'm, I'm thinking was actually a, a new addition to the, uh, the guild, which I'll say again at the end of the, the podcast for the plugs, but you can, you can get to the uh, forum page by going to tinyurl.com slash the Lincoln cast. Um, rather than explain it's the process, very tiny, account. let's be honest. Yeah, it's just like that. That'll get you to it. Um, but uh, Skychild actually had a question for us, and I, I guess I'll start off so while well, Noob and Duran can uh, compose themselves. But he wanted to know. He wanted us to talk about our builds, um, and I have a couple different builds, but they're all pretty much what world versus world geared. Because as much as as bad as I talk about it, that's where I spend most of my time, and it works pretty well in dungeons. Um, and they're all pretty much just like be tough, do a little bit of damage, but mainly just harass people. Uh, going down from like my mesmer is, I think he's just only toughness and vitality, whatever like the the whatever those points are, and he's got things that are like use uh, the focus to reflect. Because uh, I usually run around with my great sword and my like just sword uh, focus, just because the great sword's got a good slow and a good push, so I can just knock people off walls. Or uh, another thing I'll often do is I'll, I'll be running with the focus, um, pull them with the uh, wall, or if they're if we're having a counterattack, I'll use that as a speed boost and then keep it up to reflect people. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll pull them, blink past them, and then just push them with the great sword. Uh, and usually into the maws of the the, the zergs that's, that's following me to um, just get a good kill down. That's significantly more complex than how I fight, which is like <laughs> I press one, two, three, four, five. You do and the then I press thing. You swing a sword. You swing a yeah. sword. Yeah. You also and play a guardian. Sometimes don't you? I'm like, oh wait, my character can use two weapons, so I press the tilde key, and then I'm like. I'll change this up and like five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> I love then, how Durin always keeps forgetting he can weapon swap. I do. Like I, my, I play my Ellie pretty much almost all the time, but occasionally I'll hop over to like my warrior, or my thief, or something. And like, not only do I forget that I can weapon swap, but I just recently learned that you can weapon swap underwater. <laughs> I, which, which this is what you get when you play an Ellie as a main since launch. Having right. played like an Ellie recently and having played like a Mesmer and a Warrior most of the time, I will actually micro weapon swap with the Elementalist where I'll just like, I'll, I'll quickly hit H to bring up the, the weapon panel, um, like put a, put a staff on, do the speed boost, switch back. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll do, I'll do that when we're like... The know, gear, when, when the gear on my main character named the protagonist, so not my the main character... Um, I still, it's a full rare armor set still. It's just the visual armor because it looked nice and I just am too lazy <laughs> to transmogrify it into different armor. I bought a shield, Jorah shield, because it was named Jorah shield. And that's from the original Guild Wars. It looks fucking ugly, but it has a name called Jorah shield. Pretty cool. So, yeah. Pretty cool. It's orange, so I think it's special. Yeah. Um, it's, my gear is still like toughness and vitality for my Mesmer just because I'm sure there's a better build for what I'm trying to do, but... As as a person with a commander icon, you want to be the last one to die, if you can. So anything right. anything to help contribute to that. I'm yeah. not trying to kill people. I'm trying to stay alive. See, mine's pretty much all power toughness vitality for the most part. Um, aside from my my jewelry is all uh, power precision crit. Um, but I, I mean, as an Ellie who you know will die if you look at me wrong, I kind of need the toughness and vitality as I've learned over the course of this game. Um, to really even stay alive, especially given that I play Dagger Dagger, though not not specifically for PvP, which seems like that's when you hear an Ellie playing Dagger Dagger, you just assume like that's their PvP Ellie, because that's like the that's pretty much the build to play in in um, in PvP is you know a, a bunker. Uh, yeah, that, that that's much more Dagger, survival Dagger. than running around the staff. Yeah, but. I even enjoy it in PvE, and for the most part, with the exception of a few fights here and there, um, you know, namely things like uh, Lupicus, 
I do well with Dagger Dagger. Like like I said, there's a couple exceptions where I gotta switch to a staff because melee is just not really viable there. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm pleased with how my, how well I've been able to adapt it to a, a PVE. It is still basically a bunker build, um, but it's like I said, when you're playing a dagger dagger as an Ellie in PVE, that's kind of necessary because otherwise you will die incredibly quickly. Mm. See, I, having played a guardian and putting all of my bones into toughness and vitality, and then suddenly playing a a thief, and then trying to use my <laughs> innovative get to their face, and then press one two three four five five four three two one. Doesn't yeah that doesn't, doesn't work as a thief. keep me alive for very long. No, it doesn't. It does not, especially as a thief. Has dodging mechanics and healing. And thief has like stealth and like yeah. stealth. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the, the, some of the thief builds of just like I'm just gonna stay stealth forever. There was actually I remember running around in uh, World versus World last week. I got to the castle and we had actually gotten re- both the reinforced walls and the reinforced doors on the castle. And then I noticed that there was a person who was a thief who was running around in the uh, courtyard the whole time, just staying perma stealthed. <laughs> People have been trying to kill him for like forty five minutes, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was uh, hilarious. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, that's funny, but Arena, you need, probably need to fix that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's but yeah. That, that that's where I mesmer. Um, I don't play him as much now because I'm. I'm I'm working. Uh, it's when I found out that even if I got the sunrise for my mesmer, the whenever I was using it to attack, the effects of the sunrise would be canceled out to the effects of the mesmer, just because with the great sword, this like pink purplish glow happens. Oh, I was wow. like, well, I guess as much as I love you, I have to set you aside and start playing a warrior. That's pretty really uh, dumb. Yeah, it's 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 pretty dumb. <laughs> um, my right now, I'm. Testing out just a, a pretty good uh, Wuv Wuv build by a guy named Parmesan Stick. Um, you, you see him every now and then on the uh, um, Guild Wars 2 Reddit thread, which whenever he uploads just him running around in Wuv Wuv killing things, like basically like any PvP video would, he does it with just like almost Hawaiian style ukulele music. Which I think is great because most <laughs> PvP videos are like rage screaming oh, yeah. music. Oh yeah, and it's like I don't mind watching this because this is it's enjoyable. Like, it's like rage screaming or Nickelback. Yeah, <laughs> this is how That's... I remind you. Uh, and then um, my elementalist, which is still not eighty, but I'm I'm slowly getting her there. Is uh, pretty much it's very similar to Wooden Potatoes uh, condition build, which. I was testing out long before he made a post about that, but it's it's effectively just running uh, instead of vi- uh, vitality, you have tough toughness and condition damage, um, and then you just run scepter dagger and are running around mostly in fire or earth. Mm. Hmm. With like you, you swap to electric to like you you do the one two three, move really fast, knock them back, and then switch back to something else. Oh, is that like a Derivation of my one two three four five five two <laughs> five four three two one kind of build, or is uh, that... sort of except it's one, like two, one three, two three is all. It's in like one two three five, and then you swap <laughs> over. Yeah, two 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 three five are all instant things that you just you mash all three those all, all three of those at the same time, and then just quickly switch back. Wait, oh no, that just seems like a shitty. Copy oh, you're, wait, off. that's right, that's right. You think it's? I was thinking, I was thinking dagger. I'm like two is an instant on dagger. Never mind. No, on, on as far as I'm concerned, Ellie's can only wield daggers. That's just, I mean, Which, that's just what I mean, down I, to. I really like that this game has a um, workable way for an elementalist to be really up close in your face. I think that's a great concept. I, as much as I don't like bunker builds and how hard it is to, to beat them down as a warrior, <laughs> or at least as just the warrior I'm playing, I really like that idea of them. Um, that's okay. Just play your Mesmer because I'm fucking shit at killing a Mesmer. Yeah, I'm, my, I'm my Mesmer may not... My mesmer just survives, and if you keep fighting me, I will eventually wear you down. Uh, see, that's the thing. I won't. I got, if I see a mesmer, I'll just I'll turn the other direction. It won't happen. <laughs> coward. Oh, coward. I, I just I'll play either, the numbers. If you're I know, I know me, there's... I will make my way to a tower and hide. <laughs> <laughs> I know there is no chance in hell I can ever 1v1 a, a mesmer. They just they, Something they do, they are able to burst me down so quickly. It's because there's many mesmers. Yeah, maybe I don't know. 
So it's not but really a one two. I think it's I think it's more of like um, a combination of you know Mesmer's being really good at dodging around um, or you know swapping places with their their clones and stuff, and then unless I t- time a dodge perfectly, if they explode their clones on me, no amount of toughness on an, an, uh, an Ellie is going to survive that. Um, yep. uh, again, I've, I've been saying this since I started playing WoW, but I really hate Hunter Pets. Yes. Ranger Pets in this case. Yeah, R- Ranger is the only class I don't have, and I don't plan on making one. Actually, really? yeah. What do you guys think of this as a concept? Uh, and I'm sure Rangers will just complain out the ass about it, but the further away you are from your pet, the more of a, like, the lower your damage is. Uh... The problem with that is that, I mean, negates kind of the, the bonuses of. Um, of of using Having a bow. Pets. No, like if you're a great sword ranger, sure. But if you are a, a a bow ranger, like you're not getting. I mean, that's counterintuitive to to the play style of that weapon. Right. Maybe weakening the pet, but not. Then what's the ranger. point of the pet then? If you're going to be that far away doing damage for it to me. Well, the well, I think what they could do instead. I, I think what. What they could do instead would maybe be to change pets so that they are more of a utility as opposed to a damage dealer. Yeah. How about they they just get turned into mini pets instead? It's problem solved. <laughs> That's just, yeah, like it's it's a polymorph of the the animal, so it's just you turn them into like yeah. a little chippy version of. Them. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's just Japanese terminology, you fucking weeaboo. Um, I've just it, it it just seems like hey, I'm just like it's this auto attack ability. You just target them and you just send the pet after them. And when the pets die, you just swap to the next pet. So you, in the Having not Guild played War, a ranger, that's what it feels like, and it'd be awesome if someone who did what, play a ranger... What they, do, what they yeah, did in the original Guild Wars, Wars is if your pet died, all of your skills were put, put on cooldown. Yeah, that, that was a bit too far, I feel. But to be fair, you, you had the option of not bringing a pet, and most rangers did it. Yeah, most, most rangers just didn't have a pet. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Okay, it seems a bit too far on the scale. See, see, that's the thing. Like Other MMOs that have had like, a ranger-style class that doesn't have a pet... I loved them. Like I think it's a great concept for a class. Just like this idea of like a a physical damage based ranged class, but then they always just fucking ruin it by making you have the dumbass pet around. What I really would like to see, and I know I don't expect Guild Wars to do this. Uh, maybe another MMO in the future, but um, I really liked in Warcraft Three, which to anybody who doesn't know, before WoW there was a strategy game made by Blizzard called Warcraft Three. Um, but in, in one of their expansions... Is that a prequel to World of Warcraft? Yeah, but sort I've of. I've never heard of the MMO. I don't know. But there was a guy called a Beastmaster who was very much like a ranger, except he was all melee and his pets stayed next to you. And like the, it's, the D&D would do something like this too in, in pen and paper, but you just you could keep your pet next to you and you use him as a positioning thing. And so you'd like attack from both sides with you and your pet. Um, I'd like to see a, a, a game take that into effect of it, uh, like a, a two to three man Zerg instead of a person with a bow. I don't know. Um, I think that's it. Do we just want to go to plugs there's, or you guys have anything else? There's one question. Uh, yeah, somebody in chat had a question. Um, All right, then. What class would yeah. each of us create as an addition to Guild Wars 2? That class that I just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> the Gimp so you, you would, you would class? The Beastmaster. The Beastmaster class. The yeah. melee-based pet class. That's just like double axes in your face, almost Viking kind of thing. A hybrid between warriors and, and rangers. That could be interesting. I think, didn't Warhammer have a class like that? Sure. Or there's ranged as well. I don't know, Space but range? it's just like, it's, it's just this really beefy thing that's just like, if they, they have a pseudo shared health pool, but like when one die, like if you lose your pet, um, the, the the actually like the the humanoid that character goes be. a berserker thing that's almost like the uh, like the human vengeance when he's in the down state. It's just if you kill the pet, like you're both dead, but the, the guy's in just like in a rage that just well, or he's got maybe eight seconds and super crit. Maybe instead of doing that, like as as a maybe fix for the rangers, they could do something like if the pet dies, the main um, or you know the the pet's owner. Gets a, a you know fairly severe debuff for a period of time. Actually, I'd like to see it the other way, where the pets have almost no health, uh, and there's a time to um, spawn, like to to change out to a new one. 
Like let's say there's like 30 seconds or something. Um, but when you kill it, the ranger goes into like the, no, oh, no, you killed my pet and gets like 15% crit chance for the next 15 seconds. Mm. And so it's not, it's not a question of it's it's the ranger's benefit. Abuse. It's a question of is it, if it's to the attacker's benefit to kill this thing or to just deal with the um, damage for the next few, like for, for the fight. I think I've uh, like <laughs> a weirdo ranger builds of like who can kill my pet the fastest. Me, well, I mean, apparently. like, it's, do you want to kill the pet? Are you are you going to deal with fifteen seconds of super crit? Well, I should probably point out like the complaints I'm 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 leveraging against rangers. This is as somebody who has played three levels of a ranger. Yeah, so, I have not played much of ranger. I've just had to deal with them fighting me. So probably I better. I just play a thousand hours of ranger in the original. <laughs> so there's probably better ways yeah. of handling it than what I'm saying. I'm just but, kind of uh, spitballing here. Yeah, Duran, what type of profession would you like to see um, the expansion or otherwise? I would say some sort of a, a monk class, something that is more of like a, 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 a unarmed combat based that Possibly uses some sort Pandaform? of a magic. No, no Pandaform. Monks? No Pandaform, but I will say that was kind of one really interesting thing when, when WoW did that because, the, again, monk is something as a class that I've always found really interesting. So... I would definitely like to see something like that in Guild Wars 2. So, like I said, something that's unarmed or like, you know, small weapon based in your face, but is, is also has a, a magical aspect to it. Basically, I want Dagger Dagger Ellie. God damn it. <laughs> so I, apparently Guild Wars 2 is fine. That's, that's, that's what I'm well, coming out of this with. Noob? Uh, uh. I want I want a character based on my favorite anime girl Manaka Chan from Love Plus. She's the manager for the high school's tennis club. Okay, and thank then her you very much. No, no, the, um, the manager, I, I, basically I the, wanna... the trading post profession, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, she brooms the tennis courts. Um, no, <laughs> what? So she I want I want to bring courts. back. The what ritualist. does that mean? I, I don't know. Uh, I want to bring back the ritualist from the original Guild Wars, which was based around really cool things like summoning spirits. These spirits are immobile and chained to the ground. Some provide like healing bonuses, cause blindness, can steal health, can steal mana, etc. Um, it was like a really interesting class to play, and it was extremely unique compared to really anything I've seen in video games in general. And something like that, I think, would fit well with a game with unique classes. Like it seems Wars like a hybrid of necromancers and engineers, and I think yes, it is yeah. like necromancers. And engineers. I, I don't know. It, I think it'd just be like it, it, well, the best case would be just be to take as many of those elements and just unique, like further uniquify the engineers and necromancers. But um, but they have their distinctive style and skimpy outfits. <laughs> the reason I played the class. <laughs> yeah, I like it's. Now. It would be not like the, I remember, and I really just need to do some research, research on this. But like when whenever you make a character, you click on the um, like the, going through the character portraits, and you see like these fancy outfits. There's not really any guild, like any uh, engineer or mesmer or what 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 have you outfits? Is there? Ah, uh, no. Which we talked did did we talk a little bit about this on the actual podcast, or was it like a pre show thing where we were talking about uh, legendary outfit. outfits? I don't even remember. Okay. But I'm just legendary outfits. I don't know. It would just be cool to see like a my mesmer in a mesmer outfit that was just like it was an illusion into itself and just like whenever you looked at it, it what was I even there or was it just an illusion? The clothing? Like, well no, like it, it would make me be like this constantly um uh, interdimensional thing. Because that's what mesmers need is the ability to make themselves even harder to p- point out. Yeah. Clearly. Fuck Elementalist, Elementalist will just be on fire. I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm kind of already on fire anyway. No, it's just you, you suddenly become just, I just your, your version of a fire. Just fucking Human Torch? Just become Champions Online now? Johnny Flame, go. <laughs> flame on. Um, All right. So I think that's yeah, it I, for questions then. I, I believe, yeah, that, that's it. If you, I if think you what we basically took, took out of that last question was... We don't really necessarily need any other classes right now, or none that we can come up with, because every the one we we came up with, we're like, well, you could do this to it, and it would actually just be a fix to this current class. I think it's just yeah, we'd like to see more things added to make the other professions way more badass. Starting with engineers. Yes, I think that's 
I think everybody wants that. I, I want a reason like to engineers. play. Yeah, totally. The engineer was almost going to be my main, like, but right at launch, at the last second, I changed it over from engineer to Ellie, and now I'm really glad I did because engineer is not good in any way. That's pretty harsh. Yeah, I think I think we can fin- uh, finish this episode off though with any plugs we got. Uh, I, Durin, do you have any plugs? I uh, like Durin. Go ahead. Okay, I I, I just was gonna say um, just this channel, I guess. I, I'm I'm going to stream some. I'm gonna finish Devil May Cry soon, or, or continue playing it, I guess at least. Um, I'm gonna finish Spec Ops the Line, but I'll probably do that off stream because I'm already far enough in at this point. I mean, it's a six hour game, and I think I played about four and a half hours of it. It would seem weird to just kind of pick that up in the middle, um, but. Devil May Cry, I'm not as far in. I've only been playing a level at a time, so I think I finished like maybe three levels. Um, NT Full, you're right. It, that is, yes, engineers are incredibly good in in PvP. I, I just I wanted to call that out because they, they are right. That is, they are ridiculous in PvP. Um, but yeah, so I, I'll be streaming stuff on here. This? Sorry. I just, I just wanted to, wanted to make sure I called that out because he's right. I, they are, I said they were terrible in every way, and I was wrong. They are good in PvP. Um, no, it's like I, I wanted to say like that. We, I, I am seeing resurgence of engineers, but it's mainly just like grenade kits, and you can use the flamethrowers for campy things in Love Love. Yeah, but, but I mean, it's just like I, I, yeah, I, I don't. There's at like, least somewhere where if somebody is if somebody is leveling an engineer and they find that they can't do much of anything, they can at least go do that. Yeah. They don't have to just scrap the character. Um, but anyway, back to the plug, like I said, this, this channel, uh, twitch.tv slash Duren, um, I'm going to stream, I swear, I like I feel bad because I said that I was going to before and I haven't yet, but I am going to. I'm actually, I'm definitely going to because this coming week I'm going to be getting a new computer that'll run way better than the current one, which will allow for way better streaming. Um, so definitely look for, for streams after that, for sure. That'll be like, I should be getting those parts of Wednesday. So by Thursday or Friday, I should be doing some, some better streaming. Well, I'm getting streaming a, Lincoln cast episode 40 live three hours ago. Th- this was episode 40. This was episode 40. I know. Yeah. I'll um, be streaming it. I'll just quickly go through cause Hawks wants to know the specs. Uh, it's a, uh, I'm getting an i7 20 or yeah, i7 2700 K. I went with that instead of the more current gen because they are better for overclocking. Um, and then I am keeping the 16 gigs of RAM that I have in this one, just switching them over. Uh, same with the video card, the 560 Ti. Um, I am putting in a 120 gig um, SSD for um, OS and other programs, and then a, a 250 SSD for games, and then the one one and a half terabyte here for kind of every other random thing. Um, I think that's pretty much the specs. So. Not super, super high end, but much, much better than what I'm currently running. Right right now, I've got a, an i7-920, just to give you an idea. So, anyway. Very cool. Um, noob, any plugs for you, uh, sir? PC Gaming Hub? The PC Gaming Hub. Come play PC Gaming with us. Uh, of course, had a full boyfriend. You know, it's not... It's, if you want to learn about cool facts about sloths, panda bears, grizzly bears, Wikipedia facts about Japan... That's that's the video to watch, and the, they can find that. I, I can't believe I'm encouraging this, but they can find that along with the other Lincoln Lincoln podcasts. Oh god, not the Ryan Davis picture. Um, they can find that on the YouTube page, um, which is just YouTube.com/slash the Lincoln Cast, I believe, right? Yeah, should probably check that out. But um, I guess the the other plugs I'll, I have are the uh, as I said, a tinyurl.com/slash the Lincoln cast for some reason you know, like the slash Lincoln cast and, and no, the just takes you to some search page. So huh. China doesn't care. And they already took that URL from us. But yeah, if you go to the Lincoln cast that gets you to our, uh, the giant bomb forums. Mm-hmm. And if you want to, you can sign up for the guild uh, from there. Just make sure you read it. Uh, because if you just so, like create an account and then sign up, don't say anything about yourself or interact with yeah. the community. You are saying you your social security number and your, uh, what is it called? Your postal codes. That's all we need. Yeah. No, we don't. Um, and your three sizes. 
Uh, I like you can check out my uh, Twitch TV slash Thurbleton, um, but I nothing new. I'll probably stream some Natural Selection two, some Hawkin. I started playing Counter Strike Source tech. again. Really? Oh, what? Yeah, which I mean, like, me. I'm having fun with it, but at the same time, it's like I'm real. I've, I've I'm having trouble accepting the fact that I am one of those people that like when I was playing CS Source were the people who are playing CS 1.5 <laughs> in that I'm not playing the newest Counter-Strike. Right. And I just like... I, but you're playing I, the better version of Counter-Strike, and that's what matters. I like running around doing sprays of the Harlem Globetrotters or Vanilla Ice when he was good, <laughs> or the current one is Kanye West holding up the stupid statue of the trophies. That's, that's, and that sounds like a good time. That's, that's that is why I like sprays. I don't understand why they pulled sprays from Go. That's the dumbest yeah. thing. I don't know. I'm assuming it's because there were some gross sprays that were. Uh, well, yeah. Get over it. It's still, it's Steam. Um, but it's because of yeah, those goddamn it, PlayStation Three players. That's new with yeah. me. If you want to, uh, I will be at the Emerald City Comic Con. That's uh, the start of the month when when the patch goes out. So you'll uh, you'll probably be playing Guild Wars Two instead. Also, Sim City comes out that week. So oh, oh man, fuck yes, Sim City. Yeah. But if you're in Seattle, I'll, I'll be a guy wearing a giant bomb shirt, and you people watching the stream can uh, see what I look like. I guess um, I don't. To I don't know. answer, uh, Mr. Dress Leona, uh, the PS4 we did not talk, really talk about on here. Um, however, um, Cynic and yeah, I we tried to a a Lincoln cast episode. Yeah, with Cynic and I recorded a four-hour-long podcast where we did talk about I it. Wish I was there. Um, it didn't get up onto YouTube to because we try to keep just Lincoln cast stuff on the, the Lincoln cast channel on YouTube. Um, but if you do go Except to Hattiful of Boyfriends, really, kind of yeah, I think we can put Scotchcast up there because Cynic's putting the Hattiful Boyfriends up there. It was Cynic's idea to put not put the Scotchcasts up, so I'll talk to him see if he wants to go ahead and upload right. those since he has he has them currently. Um, but uh, for right, for right now, where you can find, find it, um, if you if you subscribe to us on YouTube or or, or sorry, YouTube um, iTunes, um, they are definitely being uploaded there. Or if you go to the um, Guild Wars Two sub forum on Giant Bomb, which I think is also the tiny URL slash no, that's not. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, the the tiny URL dot com slash the Lincoln Cast takes you to the forum page for. Guild Wars Two on Giant Bomb. Okay, top chief of which is the Giant Bomb like, is the Guild page. Um, Cynic will put a thread in for every episode, so you can check it out there. Or if you just click the the, the Giant Bomb Guild thread, I have a section there for the Lincoln Cast, and you can subscribe uh, via iTunes. Uh, I think there's a Podbean RSS. Yeah, uh, and then there's the YouTube. Yeah. Right. So there, there's multiple ways to get there. The and easiest way to, to to the easiest way to start that path is again tinyurls.com slash the Lincoln Cast. Yeah, Finally, and, and like I said, I'll, like I'll talk to Cynic. RPG. I'll talk to Cynic and see if we can get the the Scotchcast stuff uploaded to here. Um, since I mean, I I've forgotten that your guys' crazy fucking let's play was being uploaded, so there's no reason Scotchcast can't be just fulfilling our fantasies. Man. Um, and then are we gonna are you guys gonna do this again next week uh, live, or we're just gonna keep recording and then maybe do live somewhere in March? Um, we. And, and apologies to people who did sit in on this since we did start an hour late. Yeah, yeah, that was that was mostly my bad. Um, but uh, I night, totally forgot that we were doing a live one this week, so I wasn't in a huge hurry. So if we do it live again next week, which we'll say tentatively, unless something happens, we'll do it live next week. Um, I'd say I'd say you know what? Check the Twitter. That's twitter.com slash the Lincoln cast. Or like the uh, Facebook page. No longer nope. updated. www.facebook.com slash nope. the Lincoln cast. No, nope, no Facebook. Don't, don't, please don't. I can um, see all of your Facebook just, pages. Just check the Twitter. If, uh, if Duran and Cynic want to do it live, they will, uh, yeah. say, fuck it. We're doing it live and post it on Twitter. Um, so yeah, most likely yeah. it will be. The only reason I could see it maybe not being is if things go real bad with my computer upgrade and, Everything's on fire, and I don't. I, I don't think it's going to happen. But most likely, it'll, it'll be. We'll do it live. Uh, hey guys, hey guys, we hey, can you set this out. Uh, noob, you want to shut it down? Hey, hey, fuck you. That's right. I don't care anymore because you guys didn't like the Facebook page. This, this is all I can come up with. Thank you. Uh, I think I think Cynic will will tune us down at that. Nice. Nope. 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 Cynic, if you keep this playing, I'm going to be mad at you. <laughs> 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 uh, 
All right. Okay. <laughs> With that, we're definitely out. We're we're. I haven't stopped my recording yet. But that's because all your guys' things are overlapping my recording, so it would look real weird on the on the stream. Oh, that was it. Have a nice day and fuck off. Wait, that's no, right. that, that wasn't it. It's the traditional one, but you I don't started care. it, noob. How did you? I did start it. it. You know, it's, it's you. You need new material, different. And yet you keep going back to that tongue thing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I couldn't get the Jeff button fast enough, but yeah. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Yeah, uh, definitely. What we might do is uh, like what I'd like to do if we keep doing this, uh, uh, keep this up is after each show, mm-hmm. assuming I don't have to work Sunday mornings, which usually don't. Um, is we'll like we're like okay now that the show's over we'll play this free to play game like everyone or like everyone hop in online everybody let's go like everyone everyone guess X band and we'll do a, a guild bounty Ray play local co op <laughs> um, so like that that's something fun that we might try doing in the future um, I realize this is super late for some people <laughs> then it's also Saturday so screw off eh. yeah yeah. Oh, uh, was there any other Japanese porn games together? Here, local multiplayer. What was that there? But I couldn't hear you over noob. And his Were there any other specs you want to talk about? No, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I was just trying to quickly run it through my head without too much uh, dead air. But whoa, that, whoa, that was... whoa! Ghost Recon Online is a thing. Yeah, yeah, you didn't know. It's a free to play Ghost Recon game. Like, wait, okay. I think Tom it was released in Asia first. The game where if you t- if you get shot once you're uh, you're at fifty percent health. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I am speechless. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing. Like, like I said, it was originally I believe released just in Asia. Oh wow! But I think it's like worldwide now or something. Yeah, that's totally a thing, man. Dude, Need for Speed still, Online is a thing. I still remember my first time getting into uh, the community gaming scene. I was like, I wasn't even in high school. There was a cyber cafe um, in this place called Broderpool, in the district of uh, Indianapolis, where it was a two-story thing. And after after a certain time, only the kids could only go to the top floor. The lower floor was for like drinking and all that. And so we went. Uh, me and my buddies, like we, seven or eighth graders, we went up to the top floor, started playing. I don't think it was Ghost Recon. It was one of the Tom Clancy games. Rainbow there. Six. Uh, what was it? New. Rainbow Six. I think it was Rainbow Six because that, that's God. That's dating me. That was that was at least ten, fifteen years ago. So that would be like Rainbow Six. It wouldn't be Raven Shield. It would be before that. I think it was Rainbow Shield. It was one of those. Was it Rainbow ones. Shield? But okay. we were playing this, and we were playing the land, and then some guy gets on from the the lower floor, and we are really bad. We're just playing a co op game, and we're like we're thirty terrorists. We're getting like down to 28 and then dying and then he gets on and just smokes everyone <laughs> we're like whoa uh and it's like wait you're in this you're in the building it's like yeah can you come upstairs dude was a freaking cop <laughs> wow and he just sits down and he's got like a, 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 a camera if he had a beer just a coffee or something but he sits down and just plays on the computers next to us and i was just i was set i was like this is awesome <laughs> I want to be a cop when I grow up now so I can kill dude in so Rainbow I, Six. So I can be good at video games. <laughs> video games. Um, we but played Rainbow Six a lot recently. Fine. That is crazy. I might have to stuff. just look I, into that and see what that world is like. I don't know if I can play it. So when I was in the beta, I'm like, I joined the game and then I got killed a bunch of times, so I uninstalled it. Oh, for Ghost Recon? Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, that's that'll happen. Yeah, By the way, um, I don't know if I just need to refresh to see this, but on the Twitch page it says, "Oh God, what am I doing? You're playing Magicka." Oh no, no, yeah, yeah. I you, you pulled it up before yeah. I updated. I updated it shortly before we went live. Okay, sweet. Um, Let's talk about anime games. What anime have you seen? Let's not talk about anime. I'm, no, I'm, I'm going really to go to bed. Good, actually, I will yeah, see so you guys later. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, we'll be back yeah. again next week with more like guests. Check Twitter. Thank you.